So what's up guys, Gilbert Burns again. And today I'm gonna talk to you guys how to become a world champion. So how do I do to become a world champion in Jiu-Jitsu? So first of all, I started Jiu-Jitsu very young, 12 years old, always training. First month I was competing. I like, love the competition, but wasn't doing very, very commit with the sport. I didn't have that commitment with sport in the beginning, but I loved the competition. And then the year was going, I remember was when I was 16, I started liking more. Then I was taking way more serious and then I was commit, commit a lot more training, doing drills, competing a lot, going to the circuits, compete every circuit. Like they have the circuit on the state, then they have on my city, then they have the big tournaments and I was doing a lot. And then I was getting blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, boom, I ended up getting my black belt. And then when I got my black belt, uh, I was doing college in Rio. And then I decided right there on the college, I remember I was doing my first jiu-jitsu tournament. I, wasn't, I was training not as hard as I should, but I was training. And for my first jiu-jitsu competition as a black belt, I did it pretty good. And... Uh, I lost in the finals for a guy called Rafael Barbosa. He fight for the Soul Fighters today. He lives here in the U.S. If I'm not wrong, he lives in Texas. But at that time, he was the third place in the wards as a black belt. And I just lost the guy by advantage. And then we fought again because they have an open class. And I lost to him in the open class by half a decision or something like that. So I realized the guy was on the highest level, like third place in wards and just lost the guy by a ref decision, by advantage. Next day I went to the college again. I was in the college looking, the, <laughs> looking at my professor like, like what I'm doing right here. So I decided to quit my college and move to Sao Paulo. And then I started building that mindset because I, wanted, I was just training and I, I was in a tough moment. But I first thing, the, my coach back then, Ramon Lemos, taught me was you got to believe that you're going to make it. You got to work so hard. We're going to make a plan. So my first thing was believe that I could do it. Visualizing myself being a champion, winning the world champion. And uh, I remember that was the first thing. And the second thing, we were making a plan how to get there. So with that plan was training drills, rest, start a little bit of supplementation because I had no money back then. Very, very tough moments. I was working, so we make a little plan. So we need to make money. So we gotta get sponsors or work. I did security on the weekends. Then we gotta train, then we gotta drill, then we gotta compete. Then we get, we start organizing how we're gonna get there. And, uh, but the first mindset was believing. Second thing was making a plan, then going to the competition and getting better and, and seeing the results from my training, from my hard work, from my strength conditioning. And I remember 2009, so I got my black belt 2007, end of 2007, I moved to Sao Paulo. 2008, I lost in the quarterfinals for Lucas Lab. And uh, 2009, I went back and I beat Lucas. And 2009, it was a great year. I was in the second place in the world. I just lost to Michael Lange. And then 2010 was one of my best years. I won the Brazilian Nationals. I won the, the World Pro in Abu Dhabi. Close out with the guys, the Europeans. I was doing great at that year. Brazilian uh, World No Gi Champion. And I lost on the same finals for Michael Lange again. So 2010, okay, 2011 wasn't my best year. And I kept that mindset because 2010 was kind of perfect year, but I lost on the same finals, but it was a perfect year. Taking, taking the biggest tournament, I won every single one. And in 2011, it didn't start good. I lost in the Europeans, I, I lost on the Pan Ams. And uh, one thing that I think clicked for me was because three weeks prior to the awards, I went to compete in Europe, in Italy, and they had a tournament. And I remember I was broke. So I called one of my friends in Europe and said, hey, they have that tournament there what do you think and then we so i teach a free seminar in exchange for my trip you know so he paid my ticket i went there we paid off the ticket the tickets with my seminar and then i went to the tournament and i ended up losing on the finals for crown race 
and I was doing great against Crown Grace, and I was just, was a little lack of overconfidence because it took him down. I was very nervous before the fight because first of all, it was Crown, and then I saw Rickson Grace over there on the mat, and that was a little, wow, that's Rickson right there. So I went to the mat and uh, I took him down and I feel him very weak in the beginning. Very, very weak. And uh, I took him down and I was going to the pad. I said, man, that guy's so weak. And I had that overconfident that took out of my focus. And I was like, ah, it's going to be easy. As soon as I had that thought, I kind of relaxed. Boom, I got caught in the choke and ended up losing that fight. And then I got back to Brazil. I still making, I think, a thousand euros, something like that. The winner was making four. And that four euros back then would make so much difference on my life. But I didn't want, but I, I remember when I came back, I came back very hungry. Like, man, I cannot lose with these guys anymore. I'm done to, to fight good and lose. You know, I'm done. I had the mindset, I'm done. And I, when I saw, when I came back, they they put on the news that Kron was fighting a lightweight. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to beat this guy for sure. And then I remember I started training super hard, doing the same thing that I was doing, but with more commitment. I remember I was making my nose before training, after training. I was more focused. I was drilling more. And I wish I just took to a different level. And I remember all the guys that I was training with, they were like, man, you're looking good right now. I think you're going you're gonna to win that words. And then I remember they say that. And first it was Frozado saying, then Mandy saying, then my coach, Ramon Lemos saying, and everybody said, man, I think I'm, I might be looking very good because everyone's saying that. But then I went to the words and I, that was a hard bracket, but I ended up doing very good. But the lesson that it carried me was when I lost, I didn't, for sure I lost. I, I went to my mistakes and I saw what, what I did wrong technically. But it was more mentally mistake. I was I lose the focus. That lack of overconfidence making me a little cocky in the fight where I supposed to be in the zone, looking for positions, looking you know, looking to make him uncomfortable. I just had that lack of focus, and I was I wasn't focused on the fight, and I ended up losing focus and getting choked out, and then going to the fight, going to that camp. Finishing that three weeks prior to the wars, I was very, very focused on the details, on the small things. Got on my zone, end up winning. And I always remember that I got to be on the moment when I'm fighting. So for you guys out there that want to be a world champion, every little detail matter on your preparation, especially on the fight, on the days prior to fight, the fight week, the, the day I have my routine, my daily routine and the fight routine. And... Uh, at that day, you gotta make sure you do your best and be on your moment when you fight. That was the thing that I always get. I, gotta, I cannot lose focus. I cannot be fighting and think, oh, it's too easy. Okay, it's too easy. And that thought's coming. So when that thought coming in the fight, oh, it's too easy. Yeah, I already identified that bad thought and I already covered that. I said, okay, it's easy. Okay, but let's keep on going. Keep doing what I'm doing. Let's put pressure. Let's, let's finish the fight. It's that easy. Okay, let's finish right now. And I don't let that talk come and take over. Oh, it's too easy. Relax. No, it's too easy. Okay, I'm going to keep fighting. And the other thing that I carried me was 2010 was a great year, but I didn't want the most important tournament. I lost. So that with that, I, I, I carry me is sometimes the moment is great, but that doesn't mean you're going to win, right? That was what happened with me in 2010. But I kept trying, I kept training, I kept getting better. 2011 wasn't a great year, but I won the most important. I lost a couple, but the most important I won. So with that being said, sometimes you're not in a good position, but you got to keep fighting, keep training, keep getting better. Eventually, you're going to get your shot, you're going to get your opportunity. And sometimes everything goes good like this year for me, 2000. Uh, 2020 for me was amazing. Even with the pandemic, with everything, I fought Damian Maia, knock him out. I fought Tyron Woodley, domination. I was fighting for the title. <sighs> COVID. Boom, cancel fight, cancel fight. But 2020, I'm looking forward. Like, that year was a great year for me. The end of the year, not much, but I'm going to train. I'm still getting better. 
But next year, I'm going to keep with the same energy, trying to give my best because I, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make be my year again. So what I learned with that is first, stay in your zone when you're fighting. Don't lose focus. Second, keep working no matter what. If the year is good or bad, don't matter. Keep working, keep grinding, and eventually become a world champion. So guys, thank you so much to, to watching. I hope you like this video. Make sure you subscribe, you leave a comment, you like it. That's going to help so much. And on the comments, leave a talk about this. How do you do that? Make a video for this. I'll, I'll make more content for you guys. Just on the comments, let me know what you want me to talk about. And I'm going to share with you guys. Hope you guys like it. Let's go.